Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you some more Running Red. Last time, we got a whole bunch of quests to complete, and I showed off the new mob spawner. Well, this time, I want to refine the mob spawner. As you can see, the thing is basically turned off for the moment. However, there will still be monsters spawning and falling on top of that cobblestone. But I've got some plans that it's going to make this whole thing just better. And to see those plans through, I'm going to need an ender pearl and we're going to need some slime balls. Now, if I take an oak sapling and toss it into the blood altar, it's going to use 5,000 life essence and create a slime ball. Uh, there we go. Just like that. This was added in the 1.10 version of the game, well, of the mod pack. So it's fairly recent that this is an option once again. Now, other thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to grab my hoppers. And I've, there's a very good reason for this, which you will see briefly. We're going to put that back down there. And that's all for the time being. The rest will process on its own. Next, we're going to come over here. Remember that last quest that we needed to do? Skylines and turnstiles? Burn in hell? Needed to create a bunch of obsidian. At least ten. Well, I got my obsidian creation station set up over here. Let me make sure I actually have... Oops. Oh no. Um, hang on. Panic. Small amount of panic. We're good. May have accidentally burned a pig to death. That's okay. Uh, I have my obsidian creation station set up over here. Lava Sigil tells me that there is zero LP in the network. It takes 1,000 LP to create a bucket of lava with the Lava Sigil. Which... Hey, hey look, I got some cooked pork chops. Which, if I just use this straight out of my inventory, is about five hearts. As you can see. But, with the aqueous accumulator set up underneath the igneous extruder, and water going into two faces of the aqueous accumulator, I can make all of the obsidian I want, very simply, just by putting down a lava bucket for a thousand LP, and then scooping that bucket up, uh, scooping that lava up in a bucket, Tossing it into the igneous extruder. And I put my other chest on top of this thing to collect the drops. This brings me up to 11 obsidian total, which is enough for what I need. It completes the Black as My Soul stage of the quest, and the next is Domain of the Devil. I need to get to a specific place in the nether, and it'll get me a ghast here. But we'll come back to that in a moment. Instead, at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this obsidian with one of my hoppers and this ender pearl I grabbed to create a vacuum hopper from open blocks. Also, I want to have a little bit more obsidian than I currently do uh, on the order of four more. So, oops, wrong sigil, lava sigil, bam, bam, that hurt, but I'm not going to quite let it kill me. There we go, and we'll come back in a bit to that. First things first, though, need to run all the way home. And I need to collect a couple of things from my base. Specifically, I'm after fluid ducts and glass. Uh, hang on. Where'd they go? I swear I had some glass lying around somewhere. Uh, I guess I do not at current. Alright, I'm going to make myself some sand and I will be back after I am ready for the next step. Alrighty, folks. Let's take a look at why I wanted glass in the first place. Uh, hmm. Where did my item duct fluid ducts go? Eh, make some more. Not a big deal. Gonna need a few of these. Um, and I'm actually going to need another lever, aren't I? Which I have the sticks on hand for, but none of the cobblestone. That's okay. Alright, so in our crafting station, we're gonna make for ourselves a bit of glass pane. And then we're gonna spread that glass pane around and surround it with some obsidian. And we'll just make the two blo uh, two tanks for now because I don't have enough to make a ton more than that at the moment. So this is how this is going to work. I want experience to be coming out of this farm without as much danger for my sudden Im imminent death. As such, I'm going to stick the vacuum hopper right there and a fluid duct right there. And, thanks to the magic of bounding boxes, I can see the vacuum hopper, even though the gold chest is right there. I'm gonna hit O to close the NEI interface. 
bottom is going to be an item output and right is going to be a an XP output. We'll just use this lever for now because I'm going to need another one in a minute anyway. And then we're going to turn that into... Oh, you know what? I've got another lever over there randomly. I don't remember why I had it there, but there was definitely a reason. Anyway, let me grab this. I think I was messing around with some ideas on uh, wiring the whole thing up on regular redstone and then decided against it. So, now, that will pump any liquid XP out of the fluid duct and into the tank. And once, or out of the vacuum hopper. Technically, I don't even need the fluid duct there. I could totally just set the tank up. It might have been made more sense, but I didn't think of that until just now. All right. So, why the slime balls? Well, as I said, the most elegant way to pull this whole thing off is with sticky pistons. I like the idea of using sticky pistons for this. I know that it's not necessarily the only way, but it is my favorite way, and that matters for something. Now, if I set up... Hang on. Bit of stone. There. 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 And the sticky pistons. There. 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 And then I swap them around to point the correct direction. Hang on. Um, I don't have anything really useful on me for... Here, let me just grab these planks. I can either have a non-cluttered inventory or I can have an inventory that covers all of my immediate needs. I can't seem to do both. So, I stick that lever on there, push the button, all of the sticky pistons pulls, unflick it, and they all pull back and let things fall down. And I've got that uh, cobweb up there to hang on to, to make sure that they don't die when they fall. And, as you can see, the item hopper, I mean the vacuum hopper, will quite happily pick up anything that happens to fall nearby it. All right. Now all I need to do is get this thing opened back up for business. And the easiest way to accomplish that is going to be... Bump. Bump. This is actually relatively dangerous. Not something I'm super happy about, but this is poor design choices on my part. I could have made this a lot safer than I did. Oh, no! Okay. We're just going to let everything down there fall out of the way, and then I'll be able to get back up there and actually place the uh, stone. The only reason I can't at the moment is it's considering some monsters to be in that block, because they're quite so overpopulated in that little area. And now I need to get the last two sorted out. Bump. 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 And we're all set. Now, I never need to go over where they can see me again, and I can very easily and quickly refill my altar just by stabbing them through this little window. Do, do, do. Fantastic. Altar's back to full already. Let's actually grab my blood orb out of here and put this thing back to work keeping the network full. Awesome. I'm very happy with this system. And when I want everything to die and just get a lot of drops quickly, I can also make that happen by flipping this lever that I can't quite target from where I'm standing. Anyway. Like that. Now everything but the Enderman will die. Neat, huh? Pretty happy about that. Pretty happy about this whole thing. There are other ways. Oh, also, this tank, when I right-click on it, will eat up a little bit of liquid XP and give me a level. Now, you might notice that my experience today is quite a bit lower than it was before. Well, let me go show you why. And that's actually over on the Witch Island. All right, here we are approaching the Witch's Island, where you can see what I've been doing with my experience. I have, I think, around 50 or 60 levels in this little tank. And it's in there courtesy of the XP drain from Open Blocks. Had the bars cleverly stashed over here so no one would be able to guess. Because I'm that guy. 
Uh, here, let me find the drain for you. There you go. Just nine iron bars. Simple as that. So, stand on the XP drain. And it drains away into the tank. Storing it for later. And then you can just right-click the tank to gain a level. It's just that easy. Uh, let's see what I have in here. Well, you know what? That'll take forever to drain back out, so we're not going to do that, actually. Okay. So, the idea was that I was eventually going to want an enchanting setup of some sort, or at least some form of experience. And I figure with two witch spawners over here, this would be the place to build any form of monster farm that I wanted to do. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, here's where the materials for the monster spawner came from. It was a simple process of knowing that, the, or well, discovering at least, that this little island... Oops, 33, 20. There we go. Stops down here at Y4. If I were to dig one deeper, you will see that there's nothing but void underneath. And then, knowing where I was starting from, and just digging straight down in columns, a little bit at a time, while I was, you know, watching some YouTube. It was a good time. Better than starting from string. Apparently some of you believe that because I did not do all of the grindiness on camera that, you know, I must have used illegitimate means. Well, believe what you like. Alright, so I think that... Mm, I'm not happy about that. Fine, whatever. I think that I'm going to build my nether portal way out here because I like the idea of having this being the place of evil. And, as usual... Well, I mean, another portal is simple enough. Two, three, one, two, three, and bump. I can't quite see that high. Fine. There we go. And we'll use the chiseled stone brick to form the corners. Because that looks cool. Alright, I'm going to go stash my stuff, make myself a flint and steel, and come back to go exploring the nether. See you soon. Now, you guys didn't actually think it was going to be as simple as just make a flint and steel and off we go, did you? You may have noticed, I haven't gotten any flint yet. Well, that's because we need to go back to the alchemic chemistry set, and we need to use some smooth stone, crash, crack that down into gravel. And then that gravel, with some gunpowder, can be... Hmm. Am I wrong about this? Hang on. Flint... Chemistry set. One gravel and one flint becomes two flint. Oh, I need to get one flint the normal way first, and then I can get the rest. So, let's make a few more. Alright, and it's just going to be a simple case of put down stuff, dig through it with the shovel, repeat until I get, gra uh, until I get actual flint. And this will just take a moment. I think it's something like a 10% drop chance. There we go. There's a piece. So now I can put my flint in there with my... I mean my gravel in there with my flint. And it will double. Should be rather rapidly, actually. Because it does not take much to accomplish this recipe. There we go. In any case, take one of these with me. Leave the rest to process. Make myself my flint and steel. And I'm going to make myself a whole bunch more stone slabs before I go. The smooth stone will do a pretty good job of protecting me in terms of building myself a little early bunker. But I'm, I get the feeling that I'm going to want a lot of building material to get places. So let's take a look at where it's asking us to go. It wants us to be at negative 66, 285. Now, if I take those, the negative 66... That is negative 528 in the overworld. And then uh, 285 is 2280. So negative 528, 2280. Uh, so right along this line, actually, heck. It wants me to come back to basically here. Well then, this might be an interesting trip. Oh well. Let's see how rough this is going. Ooh. What are you doing there, skeleton? Oh well. I bet I can take him from here. 
That was not the skeleton. That was. Ha. Doesn't even notice me. Too far away. <laughs> Missed. And down he goes. Get my arrow back. In fact, speaking of arrows... Oh. Hello, creeper. How'd you get here? Oh. You must have spawned right on top of there. Because that's a reasonable explanation, right? Anyway. Let's grab myself another stack. Eh, two of arrows. Just in case there's any ghasts. Definitely don't want to run out of ammunition. Alright, folks. Let's go see what's in the nether. And also participate in some random cruelty to animals while I pass by. Won't well, let me just set the cow on fire. Thought you used to be able to do that with flint and steel by right-clicking an animal. Oh well. Probably for the best anyway. Don't need any protests started because I'm, you know, a bit of a psycho. Yeah, steak. Always take a flint and steel with you into the nether, just in case. So yeah, this is actually a terrible place to start from, since I'm going to need to travel a very long distance back. But that's okay. Let's hop in here. Downloading terrain. And... There is very little in the nether. Interesting to find some random fire vines lying around, but that's about it. Alright, I'm at negative 69, 285. Oh, there must have been a... There must have been a portal already here in the nether waiting for me. Okay, that's cool. I need to get to 29378. So I want to go this way. Huh. 290, huh? That is... Quite the... Quite the travel, actually. Uh, 350. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five. I don't have nearly enough slabs on me. Alright, I'm gonna go get enough slabs together so that I can make this little journey. And I'll be back when... Oh... Oh well. It was a fun idea while it lasted. At least I got a bunch of free obsidian out of it, right guys? Here, let me build a little... Uh... Stairway out of stone slabs leading up to my new nether portal. Ah, uh, that's just silly. Bum, 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 bum. Neat. Alright, I'll be back, guys, once I have the slabs ready. And actually, I'll probably build most of the actual bridge off-camera, too. See you soon. Alright, folks, I took my usual building approach, and I built straight out until I hit the proper, uh, well, first coordinate, X, I believe. And then I took a right-angled turn. And I noticed as I was building this way that I'm relatively near to a nether fortress now. And in fact, that seems to be my landing point is said nether fortress. Problem with that is, well, one, the nether fortress is quite a bit below me, and two, my landing pad is covered in blazes. And a wither skeleton at this point. So I needed a way to keep myself a bit better protected. As such, I am going to be building, building myself a wall as I go along as well. Or at least doing my best to do so. And when I think I'm close enough to be a fairly good shot. Taking out the enemies. Like that wither skeleton I can knock right off. I don't want to touch the zombie pigmen because they are not aggro by default. The blazes are far enough away. There we go. Unfortunately, there's still plenty more. And this is a little hairy. It is not at all safe. I'm glad I brought two stacks of arrows. However, I should be close enough now to at least this little part of things that I can make myself a safe landing spot by killing all of them. 
And the great part about this whole situation is after this, I should be able to acquire flight. I can see blazes down there. I don't know if they're aggroing on me from this distance or not. No, well, suppose I'll find out. Um, I don't have anything on me that I can't possibly afford to lose, so... Which is kind of the position you should be in when you're exploring any nether for the first time, especially in a hardcore questing mode pack. Oh, another blaze spawned at my landing platform. At least, um, weather skeletons and blazons and such will not be hard to find on this difficulty in this nether. So I think what my plan is going to be is to get as close as I can and then drop this rope ladder and use the ladder to help me build a solid wall between me and the enemies. Just there's a lot of them. Almost there. So very close. All right, 290 by 378. I'm on 368, 10 more. I think that plays right there is my only current worry. And this is why I built the wall. There we go. I've used almost a stack of arrows. It seemed to be okay. Hey, look, magma cream. That's nice. Or magma cube, sorry. There's 377. So what I'm actually going to do... Oh, 378 is where I need to be, isn't it? That's okay. This is going to drop me onto the platform, which is where I really want to be. Take out that weather skeleton. And put down my rope ladder. Yep, that will drop, get me onto the fortress. And now... Nope, I can hear one of them aggroed. That one. Got him. Now I start descending slowly. And building as I go. That was close. Closer than I like. <laughs> ah, wither skeleton. Oh no! Let's just never speak of that again. That was not a pleasant moment by any means. Here we go. Get myself a nice safe landing space. Where I can feel almost secure about existing for a minute. And then figure out the rest after. Yes, should be okay now. All right, fantastic. Let's take a look at the quest book. All right, visited. I get my guest here, and I get one of two single-use safari nets. I have no idea which either of them is going to give to me, 
Um, we'll take the one on the right, though. Next step, Flight of the Ghosts. It wants me to make an air sigil. Um, so... But I don't... Yeah, I guess I do need to do the air sigil, don't I? Hello? Okay. You can't get to me. This is good. Bam. Very, very dicey. Alright, air sigil is going to use up that gas tier, my weak blood orb, glass, and some blank slates. I am going to take all of this back home and get the heck out of the nether. Um, almost. There we go. I like to have a solid back on my rope ladder whenever possible. Just feels safer. Okay, so we have successfully navigate, navigated to the nether, and we've at least got the materials we need for the air sigil. Wanted you guys to see all that on camera is because I honestly thought I was not going to make it out alive. I'll be back once I'm back home. So yeah, came out of my nether portal, found a bit of a welcoming committee waiting for me. We're just going to kind of nudge some of these guys off into the void. Maybe? No? Eh, okay. I think I need to build that thing in a slightly safer space where I can take out the zombies. With them having no chance of killing me. Alright, what did I need? I needed more blank slates than I have, don't I? That will make me sad. Yes, I need more blank slates than I have. Blast. Alright, let me go get set up for that. Back, back in a moment. Alright, folks. Here we have it. Gas tier, five blank slates, two glass, one weak blood orb, air sigil. Now, before I take this thing for a spin, let me check my power. Alright, I have 2400 LP. Firing the air sigil once costs 50. So, plenty of power to go and show you what this guy can do. Isn't that awesome? Now, landing is a little more tricky. You actually need to fire at the ground just before you hit. And you will impact with some force. But if you change your angle of attack, then you'll be okay. In any case, quest complete. We collect iron boots, half a heart, and roar bag. Uh, I bet those iron boots have feather fall. I am right. Feather falling four, unbreaking, or five, unbreaking one. This means that close to 100% of all damage I would take from falling will instead go onto the iron boots. That's pretty useful. I will make use of that. Next steps. Okay, what do we got? We've got the basis of life or the basis of death. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Burn in hell. One of the last memories you can remember involves going... Oh, right. We did that last time. The flight of the ghosts. Fortress was obviously not a fun place to be. All the blazes that could fly, and we couldn't. What if we could do something similar to divination, like earlier? We could fly. Would it help us kill these things? Sure would. Ooh. Sharpest of life. Unlocks one quest elsewhere. Need to turn in a bucket of life. And... Ah. Time has come to make a choice. Do you accept that you are dead and try to reach the end sooner? Once you complete this quest, the choice of life will be locked forever. This quest unlocks the witchery chain. Probably gonna go this way. Not only because it's my preferred path, but because I think that it's going to be... Well, I mean, it's my preferred path because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And according to Gideon himself, he considers it the best. On the other hand, I could choose uh, to try to live. If I choose this choice, the death the choice of death will be unlocked forever. And this unlocks Nomad... Uh oh Nomadicraft. Hello. Some dudes are escaping. Clearly that bottom area is not large enough. That's okay. We're going to change that all around in the near future. I just need to not hang out right next to it all of the time. When I'm down... Huh. When I'm down here, I believe that this monsters near there will have a chance to despawn. Oh, uh, what are my other options? Basis of life. Huh. Well, actually, here we go. The basis of death. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. We'll do... The choice of life first, and see what that, what effect that has on everything. 
So there is still 3,000 essence in here, which is plenty enough for me to pull out 1,000 in that bucket and hand in this quest. Do, do, do. I use this altar for, uh, where is it? Not in there. Work with the sacrificial knife, and I'll likely build a full-on self-sacrifice altar at some point. Okay, manual submit, claim reward. Get a bucket and a heart container. And this unlocked, vampires won't hurt you. Interesting. Put away that red hurt canister. And let's see what that other quest was all about. The basis of life wants a water sigil. Well, the water sigil requires just the one blank slate and then seven buckets, which I happen to have. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to complete that quest real quick by creating one more blank slate here. I actually have everything that I need on hand for that. Surprising. I have no idea how that happened. I promise I'll never do it again. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I lied. I need water. And the water's up here. Um, hang on. You. Come with me. There we go. Do, 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 do. Monsters. Run right past the monster area, as occasionally they do leak out. Not a safe place to hang out. Come over here, fill up all my buckets. Um, right, crafting station does not respond to inventory tweaks commands, so you have to put all seven buckets of water into place manually, then the blank slate, and then the weak blood orb. One water sickle. And this can just be used to make water. Which, if I check the divination sigil, 1550 for 100 LP each. Not a big deal. One reward to claim. We'll take the third bag. Quarter of a heart. And our reward bag contains for us a heat scar spider and a wolf. That's less than awesome. We'll just keep those... Uh, tucked away and not use them right now. However, in Ender Lily, uh, we need to craft an Ender Lily seed. Okay. Let's take a look at what it takes to do that. Ender Lily seeds can be crafted with blocks of solid Ender and seeds. Maybe something a little bit better than that. Nope. We need... Eight blocks of solid ender and one wheat seed to make an ender lily seed. And the blocks of solid ender we can create from four ender pearls each. Okay, or from 1,000 resident ender, which is four ender pearls worth. Alrighty, so that's going to be a total of 32 ender pearls. I think I have a couple of stacks lying around. Let's go check. Uh, or I could have 12. 12 is a good number to have, right? All right. So between this time and next, I will do some serious ender pearl farming. Get myself set up and ready to complete that quest. In the meantime, I'm also going to take a look at what I need to do next, so I know what else to work on between episodes, if it's something that's worth doing. Vampires won't hurt you. The very first quest, Seeds of Poison. All right. Or when you were collecting the seeds, there were others. Others that appeared to not have a purpose, but you know you're going to die. Technically, you're already dead. What's the point of building things here? Why don't we just try and find out what these things do? See if we can get you out of here. I love all the poison, so I need belladonna, snowbell, mandrake, and water artichoke seeds, which I should have some of them. In any case, I'll spend some time bone mealing some grass and finding more seeds if I can. All right, that's going to be all for today, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you have, let me know in the comments below. If you have not, tell me what I can do better. And I will see you next time.